Um, so are we letting? Uh, yes, we are letting. Hey everyone, thank you very much for coming. We will be uh, starting very soon, just allowing for some time for people to join us. Okay, everyone, um, welcome. Uh, you are all coming from all corners of the world. So good morning, good evening, good afternoon. And uh, thank you very much uh, and a warm um, hello to people joining us from Zoom and to people who are following us in uh, the YouTube channel. We are starting the, this big event uh, called Tourism and the SDGs, Accelerating the 2030 Agenda, which is a side event at the High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development 2022 currently taking place. The side event is jointly organized by the World Tourism Organization and the Japan International Cooperation Agency. Um, please allow me to start with some uh, housekeeping rules for uh, everyone. Kindly rename yourselves to your name and organization so that we know who you are. Uh, keep your microphone uh, muted and the camera off during the presentations and uh, the sessions to come. Uh, we highly encourage you to share your comments or questions in the chat for those who are entering from uh, Zoom and from those who are uh, following us from YouTube. There is uh, an email address in the description that you can uh, send your email to with your questions and we will uh, make sure that we, if we have time to address that as well. Uh, so um, we would like to let you know that this uh, this meeting is being recorded just because it's uh, it's an event that we uh, place a lot of importance to and the insights that uh, we will collect uh, will be uh, significant for uh, other people who are not able to join us today to to see them. So uh, without um, uh, without further ado, just uh, to let you know that in the chat you may find the link of the program of this side event. Uh, and uh, this uh, this link will lead you to the landing um, to the landing of uh, the Tourism for SDGs platform that we have, and there you can find the side event and uh, search for the program. So 
Uh, it's a very big honor to introduce uh, our uh, UNWTO Executive Director, uh, Mrs. Uh, Zorica Rosevic, to open uh, this event and, um, and hear from her on, uh, on the importance of the SDGs and how Drift can accelerate uh, the Agenda 2030. Uh, Mrs. Urosevic, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Nico. Very happy to join you all. And in particular, Mr. Shingo Morihata, Deputy Director General of JICA. Uh, dear panelists, uh, many of you, of, of you uh, I know very well. And the moderator, uh, thank you for accepting to joining us, Professor uh, Kazem, uh, participant. First, um, let me just like recall the importance of tourism. As a third export earning category after chemicals and fuels in 2019, uh, tourism represents as well 40% of the ocean economy. The COVID crisis has brought down uh, from uh, international arrivals from 1.5 billion in 2019 to 400 million only in 2021. And since we are starting to open borders as well. Recovery is very uneven among regions. Uh, Europe and the America lead the recovery to the high vaccination rates and the opening of borders, while Asia is still um, facing a big challenge due to travel restrictions. The tourism um, is very well featured in the global 2030 agenda, as we all know. And this is the purpose and the reason why we are discussing today. Tourism has been included as targets in goal eight on inclusive and sustainable economic growth on 12 on sustainable consumption and production and 14 on the sustainable use of oceans and marine resources. And as I said earlier, 40% of the world economy in, in a blue economy is in tourism. UNWTO as a UN entity is custodian of two SDG indicators to which we are reporting every year and actually coincidentally I encourage you to follow the reporting on the SDG 8 that we have just provided to the UN Statistical Commission. The indicator 8.91 is tourist direct gross domestic product and the indicator 12.B.1 is the implementation of standard accounting tools to monitor the economic and environmental aspects of tourism sustainability. However, we all know that tourism can contribute to all SDGs and is clearly demonstrated in the UNWTO report on tourism and sustainable SDGs, sustainable development goals, journey to 2030, published in 2017. Through the years, there has been an increased integration of social and environmental issues through a mix of voluntary and mandatory measures that member states are adopting and also as part of good business practices. High quality reports on environmental, social, economic and governance issues are important for policymakers, shareholders and other stakeholders in the sector because it contributes to the promotion of a more stable and sustainable economic, social and environment development. The role of tourism in national development strategy and in the global development agenda has been growing, especially since the pandemic demonstrated the importance of the sector for economies and societies. This year, we held the first high level thematic debate at the UN General Assembly, putting sustainable and resilient tourism at the heart of the inclusive recovery. However, we all know how complex it is to measure, particularly if we consider the broad value chain and ecosystem of tourism. And we believe that the proper measurement of tourism lies at the heart of a more effective management of the sector. And currently, UNWTO, as the UN Trusted Partners in Tourism Statistics, is working towards a new framework, statistical framework, on measuring sustainable tourism or MST. But none of the existing measurement frameworks can be substituted by the JICA UNWTO set of project level indicators. And this is as well related to uh, in 2019 during the G20 presidency of Japan. Uh, this is the moment that uh, this uh, idea has been uh, launched and we are here today to move forward in the development of such indicators. The, uh, um, this is a set of ambitious set of indicators to measure tourism projects related to the 17 SDGs. Our common objective is that this innovative JICA UNWTO set of indicators could be adopted by the development community and tourism practitioners at all level of governance, 
global, national, regional, and local, and as well in communities, while making a decision to support sustainable development through tourism. I would like to particularly thank the government of Japan for its leadership in supporting tourism. Japan remains one of the biggest ODA donors in the OECD DAC. And since the COVID-19 crisis, Japan and JICA have been supporting the recovery and the resilience of the tourism sector, including through the partnership with UNWTO. I am sincerely looking forward to a very rich discussion. Thank you very much. Mrs. Urosevic, thank you very much for uh, highlighting and underscoring the importance UNWTO uh, places on uh, sustainability and the collaboration with JICA. And it's very important that we are honored to also have with us uh, Mr. Shingo Morihata, which is the Deputy Director General and Group Director for Private Sector Development uh, of the Economic Development Department of the JICA International Cooperation Agency. Uh, Mr. Morihata, good evening, uh, and we are looking forward to hear from you. Good evening, Nicola. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, uh, greeting from Tokyo. Uh, Ms. Doritza Urusovic, Ex Executive Director, World Tourism Organization, and Dr. Kazem uh, Bafdali, Professor of Graduate School of Ritzmaken, Asia Pacific University, uh, distinguished guest speakers and all participants. Uh, I'm Shingo Morihata, Deputy Director General of Economic Development Department of JICA. It is a true honor to address opening of today's event, Tourism and SDGs, accelerating the 2030 Agenda. The global goals are more urgent than ever under the current circumstances, such as global economic uncertainties, rising poverty, and widening inequality. As an executive agency in charge of Japan's official development assistance, JICA is fully committed to the contribution for the SDGs working for realizing human security and uh, quality, quality growth across countries. JICA aims to play a catalytic role for cooperating with domestic and foreign development partners, mobilizing the private sector's technical and financial resources, developing, developing innovations and extending effective approaches at the global level. At the G20 Tourism Minister's meeting held in Hokkaido, in 2019, the law of tourism in contributing SDGs, SDGs was confirmed. Tourism is a driving force for economic empowerment of vulnerable groups, particularly women, youth, persons with disabilities, migrants, indigenous and tribal people, by creating job opportunities and therefore bridging gaps to foster inclusive development. For more than half a century, JICA has been supporting tourism development in various countries, advancing economic growth, mitigating social inequalities, conserving natural and cultural resources, and promoting community-based development. These experiences taught us that tourism has great impacts on economic and social development. However, we need to well understand that tourism could cause negative impacts if it's not appropriately managed. JICA is working with developing countries on strengthening structures to maximize the positive impacts of tourism and mitigate its negative consequences. Tourism has been one of the most severely affected sectors by COVID-19. We need to take this crisis as an opportunity to rethink how the sector can be more so sustainable, resilient, and inclusive. Based on the partnership between UNWTO and JICA, we are currently working together on developing a new set of indicators to assess how tourism contributes to achieving SDGs. These indicators, which are now at the prototype stage, not only measure the impact of tourism project, but also disseminate the value of tourism in achieving the 17 goals by guiding project formulation and implementation in line with the 2030 agenda. Tourism is at the turning point right now, and we need to work together on making innovative actions through learning from new ideas and successful cases. I believe today's event will be a good occasion to showcase leading in initiatives in tourism sector to accelerate SDGs. 
Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Morihata, for these uh, insightful words. And uh, well, you see that it's not only words, we also have actions. And uh, sustainable tourism is uh, something that uh, both UNABTO and JICA are really focusing on. And uh, speaking about uh, actions, after having heard from uh, the leadership uh, on, uh, on sustainable tourism and the SDGs and the indicators, let's move to, uh, Mrs., uh, to a presentation from uh, Mrs. Um, Midori Barada, Special Advisor of the Private Sector Development Group Economic of the Economic Development Department of JICA, and Mrs. Claudia Lisboa, the Technical Coordinator of the Institutional Relationships and Partnerships Department of uh, the World Tourism Organization. We are here to learn from you, Midori and Claudia. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Nico. And uh, again, big welcome to this HLPF side event for the tourism and the SDGs today. My name is Midori Barada from JICA, Japan International Cooperation Agency. Tourism has become an indispensable part of our lives. Over the last two decades, the number of international tourist arrivals has more than doubled, and tourism has taken a significant share of each country's trade and also economy. Creating one out of 10 jobs globally, tourism provides opportunities to reduce economic and also social disabilities, conserve natural and cultural resources, foster civic pride among the local communities, and promote social cohesion. This presentation, it's just a 10 minutes presentation, but uh, we are going to brief you the linkages between tourism and also SDGs, and how this is reflected in the current collaboration between these two organizations, JICA and the UNWTO. So first, let's recapture the SDGs. The 2030 Agenda for Tourism, uh, sorry, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is a universal plan of action for people and the planet. The 17 goals outline a universal and integrated and transformative vision for making a better world by 2030, leaving no one behind. Tourism is mentioned in three goals of SDGs, as you can see in the screen, goal 8, goal 12, and goal 14. But uh, it is not well known that tourism actually has the power to contribute all 17 goals, not only these three goals that uh, I'm putting here in the slide on the left side. So in 2018, JICA carried out a study in collaboration with UNWTO. The study was titled Achieving the SDGs through Sustainable Tourism Development. And we analyzed 208 tourism projects across countries and examined their contributions to the achievement of SDGs. The research uncovered that the relevance and the effect of contributions of tourism projects are significant in economic, social and also environmental aspects. And the tourism indeed bring immense opportunities to contribute to all 17 goals. However, the JICA study also showed the challenge that the significance of tourism is not sufficiently or widely recognized because the impact of tourism projects are not systematically measured. So therefore, JICA and the UNWTO partner to develop a set of project-based indicators in tourism to assess the value of tourism to the SDG implementation. The new set of indicators are not meant to replace the official indicators or compete with other indicators, but rather complement the existing initiatives and systems by providing as a tool to assess the impact of tourism project basis. So now, to give an example of how tourism projects can advance SDGs and how we can capture it, I will pass the floor to my colleague Claudia from UNWTO. Claudia, floor is yours. Thank you so much, Amidari, for the, your kind words. Uh, 
um, we were discussing what type of project or example we could give at a certain moment. And we have decided to, to talk about the One Planet uh, Network and in particular the, the Sustainable Tourism Programme because it's a, a good example of um, different type of partnerships, different type of activities that are, and also the connection with different goals. So a little bit of uh, background for uh, uh, to refresh our minds. Uh, Unable Two is leading since November 2015, the One Planet Sustainable Tourism Program. It is one of the programs under the One Planet Network, which focus on supporting the implementation of SDG 12 with a mandate from the United Nations General Assembly until 2030. The network is coordinated by uh, UNEP, uh, with whom we collaborate closely and operates as a multi-stakeholder partnership, which provides tools and solutions to deliver on the SDGs. In particular, the One Planet Sustainable Tourism Program has its focus on addressing the triple planetary crisis of climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution, and therefore supports the implementation of SDG 12 in tourism, as well as other connected goals of mainly environmental focuses, like 13, 14, 15, on climate action and the protection of marine and terrestrial resources, respectively. The Glasgow Declaration on Climate Action in Tourism and the Global Tourism Plastic Initiative have been launched as voluntary commitments under the umbrella of the One Planet Sustainable Tourism Programme. Both initiatives propose frameworks for stakeholders to take action in a consistent and coordinated manner and include annual reporting requirements for signatories so that the best practice resulting from the implementation of the commitments can be shared across network uh, members. Uh, we'll, within the, the panel discussion, we'll be hearing from some of the signatures of these initiatives and the work they are doing to support the SDGs and, um, uh, and tourism. So in particular, uh, One Planet Sustainable Tourism Program as its focus on addressing the, uh, the, the, the triple, um, sorry, like I said, the One Planet uh, is the, is, dealing with three main actions, climate action, the particular economy uh, of plastics and sustainable food value chains, and contributes to uh, main, as a starting point, uh, SDG 12, but also 13, 14, 15, and two. And now what, what, what I'm proposing here is to dive in, to zoom in, in uh, the different connections. And this is just a small sample of, of the connections that tourism uh, as with the different SDGs and targets. So when we talk, for instance, about target 12.1 on SCT, uh, so, so um, consumption and production policies, we immediately uh, talk about the Glasgow Declaration, Global Tourism Plastic Initiative, and One Planet, which you have just mentioned. And these are examples of uh, uh, contribution to Goal 17 on partnerships. But also, uh, it's also contributing for the other goals that, that we mentioned before, 13, 14, and also number two at the right here at the bottom of our follow PowerPoint. Target 12, two on resource use um, deals with, with themes like natural resources, energy and water, and therefore is, is um, contributing to goals 13, 14, 15, but also number six on uh, clean water uh, and also on seven, uh, goal seven on energy. When we look at target 12.3 and food loss and waste, we have themes of food waste that are related with the target, uh, with target 2.4 on sustainable food production and food security, but also with life, wildlife protection, which contributes to goal 15. In all these examples that I've just mentioned so far, tourism has an action to do. We have, we know that we have the initiatives like I mentioned before, but also um, tourism has a, a role to play in, in efficient use of resources and also can contribute to reduce food loss and waste by having um, a more sustainable um, uh, business. And this also takes us then to waste management and management of chemical waste, which is a target that we, we see the potential, but more as an influence than the proper management. And we refer to 12.5 as being the one where uh, um, tourism could have a more direct uh, action. And then we also have other uh, uh, targets like 
12.8 on education and awareness or 12.9 on technolo technological capacity that also connect us with goal nine or on in terms of education and awareness, we're talking about education and inclusion, including in the CVs of tourism, uh, the, the principles of, uh, um, um, I, I'm sorry, um, responsible consumption and production, but also in training of staff of uh, tourism businesses, which is also related with goal eight. Like I said, this is just a sample because we do not have that much time. We could be here for several hours just with this one. But in what we're doing together with, um, with JICA is, in fact, to develop a new set of project-based uh, indicators that should be made uh, public soon, but will help us to measure better this influence and, and to showcase the, inter the, the connection of tourism and all the with all the goals, but also between the goals. Um, the outputs of our cooperation will support the creation of a shared understanding on how tourism sector can most effectively contribute to the SDGs, as well as the implications of the SDGs for the tourism sector. Therefore, we the collaboration aims to better understand and recognize the potential of tourism in the achievement of the SDGs. Uh, strengthen partnerships and the engagement of tourism sector in the SDGs implementation, advocate for the development of instruments for sustainable tourism on public policy financing framework and uh, business operations along the value chain, as well as catalyze increased ODA and aid for trade flows from the donors community. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Claudia and Midori for, uh, for your insights and uh, showing us the way forward. In, uh, at this stage, let's take this chance and uh, allow me to ask all participants here to open their cameras for a group photo. Uh, and uh, as we prepare for uh, the very interesting panel that follows up. So please open your cameras for, to, for us to have a group photo. Okay, great. So um, uh, just give a big smile and then. Great. And then we continue. So uh, this is a time, this is the moment that uh, a lot of you were waiting and uh, we are waiting for this moment as well, because uh, we will hear from people from all over the world about uh, sustainability and how they actually deal with it. Uh, let me please um, uh, so uh, initiate the, the panel discussion on power of tourism as a driver for sustainable development, moderated by Professor Bafadari and Kazim from uh, the the Chuminkan uh, Asia Pacific University in Japan. So uh, Mr. Kazim has uh, a very broad experience. He's an academic, he's the academic director of uh, the Kunisaki City Research Center for World Agriculture Heritage uh, in Japan and professor of tourism and hospitality. Um, and uh, he will be moderating this very interesting session with, uh, with our invited uh, speakers. So uh, professor, Kazim will be accompanied actually by an excellent group of panelists that will uh, share with us experiences and uh, we hope that they will inspire, uh, that they will inspire us all. Um, what I would like to do now is ask you to participate as much as possible. Uh, send us your uh, messages for those who are participating in the Zoom on, in the chat or those uh, that are following us uh, through YouTube, please uh, send us the emails and we will try to, uh, to respond to your questions. Um, and uh, well, we're here to learn from you, uh, Mr. Uh, Bafadari, and uh, to all the speakers participating today. Thank you very much. Let's start the panel discussion. Thank you, Nicolas. Um, I would like to thank uh, uh, all the participants first for uh, being with us tonight. I uh, thank the uh, organizers, uh, Ms. Uh, Zorista, Executive Director of UNWTO, Mr. Morishita, the Deputy Director General and Group Director uh, of Private Sector Development at JICA, um, um, my colleagues in JICA and UNWTO are Ms. Midori uh, Barada and uh, uh, Claudia. Um, and I would like to uh, thank um, the panelists that they devoted their expertise and their uh, 
experiences uh, to create this great event uh, to showcase SDGs and to interpret it. So today's event is going to be um, showcasing tourism and SDGs. We have um, very uh, specific objects um, and I'm going to summarize it because uh, one of our main um, uh, issue tonight is to be really on time. So the first uh, objective is to showcase SDGs themselves and uh, the role of tourism as a driver. The second one is uh, to introduce new models of tourism. And uh, uh, lastly, we are going to introduce UNWT or JICA um, indicators uh, for uh, project-based uh, activities. <laughs> so uh, knowing the fact of these uh, three uh, objectives, we are going to move on uh, to uh, the panel discussions. And our first panelist uh, is uh, uh, Ms. Lina. So um, Lina Fernanda Pinto from International Cooperation Program and uh, Delegate of uh, Directorate of Quality and Sustainable Development of uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, Ministry of Tourism of uh, uh, Colombia. Um, Lina is going to share uh, her experience of working with international organizations and working with sustainability uh, and international cooperation uh, and relations. Uh, uh, she's an expert in public and private uh, sector projects management and uh, uh, reporting activities uh, to partner con uh, countries and strategic alliance. Um, I would like to ask Lina, uh, uh, without any uh, uh, time uh, wasting, to uh, start her presentation. Lina, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, good morning from this part of the world. Greetings to all the high-level policymakers from all the countries, all the leaders from the private sector and civil society that are gathered today. Um, from the Ministry of Commerce, Industry and Tourism of Colombia, we are glad to be part of this uh, global forum. And I would like to share our experience and good practices and lessons on sustainable tourism. And everything started back in 2020 uh, after and all around the pandemic and all, all these problems around the world. And in 2020, we created the new general law of tourism. Uh, this is our main law. And this law helps the sector on the path of economic reactivation. It is a combination of short, medium and long term measures. Uh, this law provides rent discounts for investments made in environmental control, conservation and improvement and special measures to counteract maritime erosion in municipalities with coastal or beach areas. Uh, this law is framing four main points sustainability, quality, formalization, and reactivation. On the other hand, as I said, it has become evident in recent years and more so during the COVID-19 pandemic that developing sustainable tourism is both a responsibility and an opportunity in Colombia. Um, we are one of those countries that has a lot of biodiversity and that is why we formulated the sustainable tourism policy uh, which we are, which is called Together with Nature. This is a long-term strategic vision for the sector. Uh, Together with Nature seeks to unite all industry stakeholders towards the goal of developing sustainable tourism in Colombia. This is both a tribute and a recognition to our na nature, biodiversity, and unique natural resources. With the adoption of this policy, Colombia became part of the 12 countries in the world that have a public policy framework for sustainability in tourism. This policy consists of, uh, as, I said, as I said before, a strategic plan to 2030, and is compri comprised in six strategies that are consistent with the global agenda for sustainable uh, development that we are talking today. Um, within the implementation of this policy, we, de we develop a strategy called Colombia Sustainable Tourism, which is a training for tourism entrepreneurs and businesses. This strategy has three fundamental things. The first one is an e-learning platform. We create this e-learning platform unique in Latin America. 
uh, with practical digital and interactive content to acquire knowledge, skills, and learn from successful sustainability cases of a study. To date, uh, we have more than 2,000 entrepreneurs registered on the platform and undertaking the modules. And now with, ally, uh, with an, a strategic alliance that we made with international cooperation agencies, we plan to help 15 entrepreneurs with capital money and advisory so they can implement the sustainable practices. Um, the second one uh, of these uh, tools was a manual of good practices in sustainability for tourism entrepreneurs. This manual contains a tools to identify the environmental impacts of tourism, as well as the actions to take in order to mitigate and compensate them. We also have these virtual and in-person workshops in all around the country, in which the main components of the strategy are societalized uh, to all the businesses and entrepreneurs. And finally, we are working. We are working in these two or three uh, final uh, plans. And the first one is that we are working with the United Nations Environment Program, the UNEP, and the World Wildlife Fund (WWF). Um, we we work with them to design a practical training course on sustainable gastronomy, you know, uh, for the tourism sector, with a corresponding guide for restaurants and lodgings. This course promotes the sustainable use of food procurement and all the production, and as well the continuous monitoring of food waste, its, its proper disposal and the strengthening of the local production chain of organic products. Today, we have more than 1,000 participants in the platform taking this course on sustainable gastronomy. Um, uh, also, we have this campaign called Colombia Limpia, which is an awareness raising campaign uh, of the importance of keeping tourist destinations clean. Um, on 2020, we have the, we held this campaign for the um, for the waste of all the, um, the the collect waste and all around the country. And we we had the help of more than 3,000 volunteers, and they managed to recover more than 18 to 20 tons of solid waste on landscapes of each destination. So um, all these tools have been developed to have an adequate reactivation and long-term consolidation of the sector and to keep working around biosafety and tourism development with confidence, resilience, and sustainable as a guiding principle. Uh, we hope that this work that we had, we had done during the last years uh, shared a path forward for a stronger, well-prepared, and a more resilient tourism economy. Um, mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is all we have till now, so uh, this is what Colombia is doing right now. Thank you very much. You uh, uh, summarized uh, your long activities and comprehensive one in a very, very good way, uh, just in five minutes. We, I'm going to pick up uh, your human resource development and e-learning program and gastronomy. Uh, which you pointed out two very important elements of sustainability. Without food and without uh, future human resource, we can't continue and you're doing a good job. So uh, thank you very much. We are going back to all uh, uh, panelists again. I would like to uh, move from the government sector to an organization, an NGO or organization that um, uh, has a very high expertise in sustainability and tourism. Uh, the long run. Uh, Ms. Delphin uh, leads the long run, uh, which she joined in 2014 in technical assistant role. The long run supports and connects a, a global collision of nature-based tourism, um, nature-based tourism uh, that um, enterprises um, uh, that strive to continuously expand their uh, net positive impact on nature, people, and culture by leveraging uh, their business. Uh, the long run provides a platform for knowledge exchange and advocacy, as well as the leading uh, standard tourism based on uh, privately produced areas. Um, I would like to save time for uh, uh, accommodating the uh, valuable uh, comments uh, from uh, Delphine. Uh, floor is yours, Delphine. Thank you. And thank you for inviting us on this uh, really uh, great panel. 
so I'll delve into it because five minutes is quite short to talk about, you know, what our members are doing. Um, I think we were to talk about uh, how our members implement nature-based solutions and nature-based solutions are believed to be an effective way to, to uh, address climate change because they tackle biodiversity as well as human livelihoods, the human co component explicitly. Uh, they strengthen carbon capture, adaptation and resilience. As you said, the long run is a global coalition of passionate people actually collaborating to conserve and regenerate ecosystems for the benefit of all in perpetuity and using tourism as a vehicle. So it's quite a niche, <laughs> um, but importantly, they committed to adopting a holistic approach to sustainability, which we frame around four C's of conservation, community, culture, and commerce, which is a backbone for the success of nature-based solution and to achieve long-term positive impacts. So just to give an overview of the kind of work that our members are doing through their tourism operation, uh, in, you know, one of the most important work that they're doing is they seek to drive change in their landscape by demonstrating that conservation is actually a competitive land use through tourism. And as a result, engage other land users um, and increase uh, the conservation landscape and habitat connectivity. So for example, climate ecological um, uh, refuge in the Pantanal uh, by introducing jaguar-based jaguar tourism and demonstrating that the jaguar is more valuable alive than dead, um, create, it was instrumental in, in creating um, uh, you know, a movement where 50,000 hectares uh, of, of conservation landscape has become 600,000 hectares. Or um, Iborana in, in Kenya, who's driving, being instrumental in expanding uh, the endangered rhino, uh, black rhino landscape. Conservation work also includes, you know, in our membership includes restoring habitat, wildlife population, removing alien species to bring back, reestablish uh, native flora and fauna, so for example, in Akaba in Australia, Otahi in New Zealand. Uh, it's also about facilitating the creation of um, uh, community-based conservation areas, such as in missile and marine protected area, um, uh, and restoring uh, wildlife, marine life. Um, finally, you know, beyond their borders, our members are really engaging and promoting and empowering local communities to adopt sustainable practices. So, for example, in the Maldives, one of our members, uh, uh, Lamu Six Senses, is, is, uh, has a program for responsible fish, uh, fishing ambassadors. Obviously, tourism is a, a way to finance the conservation work, but it's not only that. As we know, if done right, it's also the foundation of a sustainable and inclusive economy. And our members are really working hard um, on that. Uh, all have a really strong local empo employment policy. So, for example, Basecamp Explorer in Kenya, 95% of the staff is local. And members also promote community-based enterprise, bring social infrastructure and often services where they don't exist, so health, water, education. But where they're quite innovative and forward thinking is really emphasizing vocational training to play, uh, to, you know, to engage communities, to empower communities to engage in the tourism, in the sustainable tourism economy. So this is, for example, the purpose of the Desert Academy in, uh, in Namibia, which was created by Volvidence or the empowerment of women in, in position that they don't traditionally hold. Uh, for example, by Segera created an all-women rangers team. So guest experience, you know, what, what's the role of the guest? And I think the power of our members is really to engage guests actively in the destination's impact journey. The guests can become ambassadors, they become network of support, and, and they can take away also potential change, you know, in their da daily life. So what does it look like, you know, guest experience in, in our membership? Well, it's about participating in conservation activities, try tracking rhinos, monitor, monitoring blue macaws nest in the Pantanal, um, but also, you know, for younger guests to be uh, included in a junior marine biology program uh, in the Maldives. It's um, it's also the smaller stuff, you know, all our members provide back of house tour, which, which enable guests to look at, you know, delve into a bit more into energy efficiency, water use, um, waste management. 
um, but also experiencing the delights of foraging for their food and learning as well about permaculture, for example, in Nikoi Island in Indonesia, or learning about medicinal herbs, you know, foraging for herbs and learning about traditional medicine. But I think one of the biggest impact that our members have is by bringing people to their destination, to this incredible landscape that our members protect, is connecting guests, connecting people to nature, to their life support system, to jolt them uh, perhaps uh, 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 to care for something that they might have not thought about, is to slow down and listen to silence and, and get reconnect, reconnected uh, uh, to something that they forgot perhaps. Um, so, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you so much. We are going back to you and uh, of course we're going to hear for more from you and thank you for showcasing uh, the implementation and uh, I would like to pick up your uh, comprehensive and holistic approach to conservation and the three C's of uh, community, culture, and commerce, uh, or knowing the fact that 95% uh, of the job are doing by local and how you create a host a guest win-win um, uh, relationship. Um, um, this uh, shows that how these showcases are interpreting sustainability uh, and you are talking the same thing. Let's move on to the industry. Uh, uh, we are going to uh, hear from uh, Nadine, uh, who is from the Travel Corporation. Nadine Pinto is the Global Sustainability Manager for the Right and the Travel Corporation, TTC, a family of 41 travel brands operating worldwide. Nadine's primary focus is implementing TTC's sustainability strategy, how uh, the uh, thread right, uh, the thread right, including its efforts to addressing climate change uh, through the group's climate action plan. Um, I would like to ask Nadine uh, to enlighten us with uh, uh, the uh, information uh, that is prepared for us tonight. Nadine, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nadine, the Global Sustainability Manager for the Travel Corporation. Um, I just want to quickly recap who the Travel Corporation is so you can un better understand our scale. We're 41 travel brands that range from guided travel, luxury hotels, river cruises, travel agencies, and other specialist brands. We operate across 70 destinations. Of course, the scale presents a wonderful opportunity for meaningful impact. However, it also means that we have to measure impact from our brands and our operations with careful consideration, time, and resources. So the Travel Corporation has integrated sustainability into our operations since 2008. However, we accelerated our climate efforts in 2019 and our climate action plan, which is on the screen right now, really shows what we've been doing since then. We began by working on our carbon footprint measurement. As we all know, we can't manage what we can't measure. We implemented two new tools to measure the carbon footprint of our business. The first being a cloud-based environmental reporting system, and that measures our scope one and two emissions. Again, those are our direct emissions from offices, hotels, and ships, and more than 500 vehicles. We then had to create a custom trip carbon calculator to measure the emissions from our trips that we operate across the world. And this constitutes a majority of our scope three emissions. We continue to update this tool to ensure we measure our trips with the greatest accuracy. In 2021, we underwent an audit of our scope one and two baseline, and we're creating our science-based targets. That leads us to our second point of the plan, which is to reduce. TTC was a launch signatory of the Glasgow Declaration, which Claudia introduced earlier. Um, it launched at, C at the COP26 in November, 2021. The declaration obliges signatories to commit to delivering and reporting on climate action plans that align with the global commitment to have emissions by 2030 and reach net zero as soon as possible before 2050. So through TTC's climate action plan, the company has made a public commitment to setting carbon reduction targets and annually reporting on our progress in alignment with the Glasgow Declaration. Since the publication of our plan, TTC has also begun working on our science-based targets um, and they've been internally approved. They're just awaiting uh, review by the Science-Based Target Initiative. So we hope to share those shortly. 
The third point of our plan is to invest in carbon removal, as we know that this is also a significant um, opportunity to combat climate change. So through the company's Treadright Foundation, we are committed to funding nature-based carbon removal solutions. Our first projects are both based in the US and they use the power of kelp to store carbon. So really excited from the findings of these two projects, which are showing to be promising um, at being able to store carbon. The fourth point of our plan is to offset. And so we continue to view verifiable carbon offsets as a tool to address our emissions that we cannot offset, uh, that we cannot reduce. In 2021, we announced that beginning in 2022, all TTC offices, as well as our employee air business travel will be offset and carbon neutral. In addition, trips by our brands such as Contiki, Highland Explorer Tours and Haggis Adventures, all located in Scotland, will be carbon neutral as well. You can learn more about the carbon offset projects we support at our website. The final and most important part of our plan is to evolve. Um, it's really meant to address the inevitable challenges that we know we're gonna face on our pathway to net zero. As new climate studies become available, new science, new technology, we have to be able to adapt um, our plan as well. It's necessary for us to remain flexible. Again, this is where our participation in the Glasgow Declaration is so helpful. We're able to network with others and learn about the best practices in tourism to address climate. So I definitely recommend joining that if possible. I just wanna talk briefly about some of the hurdles and challenges we had with implementing this, carbon, uh, this climate action plan. Um, and mainly that's really helping our team members and our consumers and our guests really understand it. Um, you can see here that the plan includes complex terms such as what is net zero, carbon removal and nature-based solutions. They're, they're not really easily understood by the average person. So to combat this, TTC had to develop um, a training course for all our employees to learn about the climate action plan. Um, it in includes interactive quizzes, uh, visual representations, basically everything we could do to really make it as easy for our employees to understand and share with our travelers as um, easily as possible. I do have a few recommendations for those who are kind of just looking to begin um, addressing their climate change, uh, addressing their climate footprint or their carbon footprint. And that is to create a climate action plan. And, and of course it can be overwhelming. There's many steps to it, um, but don't let that dismay you. You can focus on the low hanging fruit that's easier to implement. Um, and that may require smaller behavioral changes. Thank Simultaneously, you. I would say seek out opportunities to develop or accelerate low carbon alternatives where possible. Um, it's important just that we do not sit back and wait for the industry to catch up. We really need to advocate where possible and align your organization with others to seek and achieve net zero and demonstrate that collective action. Again, the Glasgow Declaration for Climate Action is definitely a great opportunity for that. Um, so that's just summarizes what the Travel Corporation has been up to um, as we address climate change. Perfect. Thank you so much. You pointed out the, the bad guy, the carbon and pollution. And uh, I will pick up uh, the part that you mentioned about 500 vehicles, transportation industry, which is uh, one of the biggest responsible and how uh, you have uh, uh, solutions and how we can uh, showcase and we can uh, share the lessons that you are doing with your large network. Thank you very much. Um, let's back uh, go back from the industry to uh, uh, organizational part and uh, bring uh, uh, the expertise uh, from the South Pacific organization. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Chris Cocker, uh, CEO of the South Pacific Tourism Organization with us um, uh, from the Kingdom of Tonga. Uh, and is, he's currently the Chief Executive Officer of the Pacific Tourism Organization, SPTO, a position he has occupied since 2016. Uh, having previously worked for a number of regional organizations, including the Pacific Community, uh, SPC, Pacific Corporation Foundation, Pacific Trade Invest, and World uh, Wildlife Foundation. Um, we have all the experience uh, that we uh, would like to hear uh, from Mr. Cocker. Uh, I uh, pass the floor to Mr. Cocker. 
uh, directly to save the town. Now, Chris, the floor is yours. Thank you, Kasim, and a warm Pacific greetings. Thank you for the opportunity for SPTO um, uh, to participate in this side event. And uh, just for the information of our uh, audience is that our mandate is to promote and develop tourism uh, in the Pacific region. And as you can see in the map, uh, we have about 20 Pacific Island member countries, ranging from Rapa Nui in the east right up to Marshall Islands in the north. Timor Leste in the west and the Kingdom of Tonga in the south. Uh, we're an inter, uh, intergovernmental regional organization, um, and we have also private sector members. And our organization's vision uh, is that the Pacific is empowered by and benefiting from sustainable tourism. Um, SPTO and its members um, will imp are currently implementing uh, together our, our Pacific tourism policy framework uh, through support and commitment and innovative partnerships that start within our individual countries um, and is extended globally to our partners and also visitors all over the world. The framework uh, that has been developed uh, has been um, developed during uh, the quiet period that we've had in the past uh, three years. And it's given us the opportunity to rethink and also rebuild. Uh, and it gave us the opportunity to revise our strategic plan and develop three strategies. And one of these strategies is our, our um, the Pacific Tourism Policy Framework. The strategic plan of SPTO and our policy framework, tourism policy framework, also is aligning closely to uh, the 2050 Blue Pacific Strategy that has been have been submitted to our Pacific leaders who are currently meeting, uh, uh, will be meeting, sorry, tomorrow, uh, and for the endorsement. And um, this uh, 2050 Blue Pacific Strategy outlines the overarching vision to protect and secure our Pacific people, place, and, and prospects in this case. However, there are numerous challenges uh, that beset the implementation of the SPTO uh, Pacific Tourism Policy Framework. And I'll just focus on three key challenges, um, particularly funding support to support the implementation of this framework. We currently have a digital uh, strategy, which is being currently funded by a development partner, which is the New Zealand government for the next four years. But we are yet to secure funding support to, to implement this framework. The other key um, challenge that we have is keeping the confidence and trust of our people in this industry, uh, especially, especially when um, the Pacific opens up for travel again. Uh, that's a, a challenge, a second challenge. And the third one is human resources. Uh, we are facing um, a loss of human resources, particularly skilled, uh, um, skilled tourism uh, staff to other sectors. Uh, in this case, and there is a brain drain uh, from our side. A lot of our industry in the Pacific are spending also a lot of time retraining the current um, uh, cur the the skill the labor that has been uh, has been recruited again. And these are people who left two to three years, and they need to be reskilled in this case. Um, examples of initi initiatives that that bring this. Uh, Pacific tourism policy framework, sustainable tourism policy framework to life is as part of our vision for 2030, um, our leaders through the Council of Tourism Ministers have signed up to uh, a Pacific Leaders Sustainable Tourism Commitment, which is of a high-level commitment from all our member countries for sustainable tourism. To date, nine of our countries have signed up. Uh, we have about 11 left, and uh, our next meeting will be in October, uh, where our Council of Ministers, so the aim is to actually get all of our 20 Pacific Island countries signing up for this commitment. The other area um, of bringing this framework to life is the development of our Pacific Tourism Statistics Strategy to support uh, evidence-based planning and decision-making, including a monitoring of, of this framework. Uh, current work is underway to develop our Pacific Sustainable Tourism Criteria Guidelines which be aligned to the global sustainable tourism criteria, um, which aims to support countries in informative development 
or improvement of national standards and related sustainable tourism programs. Um, another, another example is the development of our Pacific Sustainable Tourism Indicators Framework to effectively measure the value and impact of tourism in the region. At the moment, we only have um, statistics on arrivals, air arrivals, and also some on cruise arrivals, but we lack statistics on the environmental side as well as social cultural. Um, innovative marketing for digital transformation of the sector uh, is also another example in this case. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Cocker. And uh, um, your long-term vision uh, is uh, one of the uh, examples that we need to learn from uh, your 2050 uh, Blue Pacific strategy, for example, and uh, the guideline for sustainable tourism and uh, the indicator buildings. These are the tools that are necessary for a measurement and evaluation of sustainability, uh, how uh, we know uh, we are getting there and how we measure uh, the development is very important in long run. Um, thank you very much. I think uh, the combination of the government aspects, NGOs, organizations, the industry, um, and uh, the case of South Pacific altogether uh, is uh, uh, going to represent and showcase sustainability. We are going to have uh, our uh, doer, uh, a person who works with uh, JICA, uh, the Japan's uh, um, uh, overseas development uh, grade funder, and the person who, who is in charge of working with communities, uh, Mr. Uh, Aoki. Uh, Mr. Aoki uh, uh, is a project manager uh, and a project leader, leader uh, for enhancing the mechanism for sustainable community-based tourism development in North region in Dominican Republic uh, financed by JICA. Uh, leader of the sustainable tourism and regional development project in Dominican Republic, Colombia and Argentina. Uh, Mr. Aoki has a lot of uh, experience uh, working in the field with people and we are going to hear from him uh, and from uh, his experiences in such a long uh, time working with people and uh, for sustainable development. Mr. Aoki, floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <clears throat> uh, again, thank you very much for, for having me here, uh, one of the panelists of this interesting session. And again, my name is Takashi Aoki. I'm a consultant working in the ICNet, the company which works for the JICA, other international organization and the private companies in different countries. This time, let me briefly share our experience of the project, just to mention it in the introduction. I have an opportunity to lead the community-based tourism project in the Dominican Republic, uh, located in the Caribbean, southern of the United States, east of Cuba, uh, well known as a beach tourism destination. Before Kobe, annually they received more than uh, 6.5 million international tourists, uh, where the population of the country is about 10 million. By the way, they are actually one of the few countries which already get back to the same level as before the Kobe in, the in terms of the number of the international tourist arrival. As a part of the technical assistant of the pro uh, JICA project, uh, this project has been implemented from the April 2016 to the March 2022. Uh, official name is the Project for Strengthening the Sustainable Tourism Development Mechanism based on the communities on the Northern region of the Dominican Republic. And the, as a counterpart of this project are the Minister of Tourism and the Institution National Formation Technical Professional Infotep and the co uh, cooperation uh, with the Ministry of Economy and Planning and Development. As a uh, uh, title already mentioned, the objective of this project is to strengthen the capacity and mechanism to the facilitate the development of the sustainable community tourism with the public and the private cooperation in the Northern region. Uh, this region called Shibao is one third of the population living in the region, covering 14 provinces with a rich nature and cultural resources 
Also, northern part, uh, the northern coast is a pioneer destination based on the beach resort complex. Traditionally, tourism developed in the Dominican Republic is uh, by large investment, mainly foreign capitals, and the surrounding community and other provinces where there are no such a tourism development are often excluded from the tourism activity. As a result, benefit uh, tourism are very limited as well as uh, tourism offers. Our approach of the community-based tourism are based on the utilizing what they have within and around the communities, put a, a value on them and converting into the tourism experience. Uh, using local gastronomy, production of the craft, local adventure experience, family in the industry to do the community uh, tourism uh, community tourism business. The project has encouraged to focusing on the identity and the local pride, use the local resources, create a platform which local actors can work together. Some of the municipal and the provincial groups can create a common vision for the tourism development and also create the local brand. Uh, we, are, we have focused on the positive part of the communities and the region rather than the problem. Since when we discuss a problem in the community, we focusing on uh, for the who are the responsible. At the end, usually the governments are responsible. So we take a positive approach to value on what they have in the in the, uh, in the in their community and their identity. Through this approach, the community can uh, protagonist for the development of the tourism activity, but it is necessary to have the mechanism to support. Mechanism include a structure, strategy, methodology, human resources and actual cases. Structure, we work the three different levels from the community, region, and the central uh, policy level. And the strategy, uh, we make the uh, concept paper and the strategy document for the CBT, Vision 2020 by the Minister of Tourism. Methodology, it's manual, practical guide, how to make the theory into practice. As a human uh, resources, that uh, we train the uh, local guys, uh, community leaders, facilitator, and coordinator, as well as the staff in the ministries, also to create the training program for them. And actual cases, uh, through the 80 pilot activities, we can support 31 productive, uh, productive unit and 14 territorial group, a two regional group. So we believe that the promotion of the CTB can contribute the autonomy and the empowerment of the community and the mechanism for the CTB can create opportunity for the local economic growth, diversity of the destination offering and decrease the dependency of the foreign capital. Thank you very much. This is a, a, you know, the summary of the project and we detail you can get in the, our website and then the, uh, you can get more. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aoki-san. Um you uh, are a practical man and you proved it by your punctuality. Um, I think you are uh, uh, beautifully uh, implementing sustainable livelihood approach and uh, changing the uh, sustainable uh, livelihood capitals of human capital, social, natural, uh, and uh, economic capital into tourism attractions and uh, adding uh, more value to it or uh, with diversification of uh, local economy, uh, you creating more sustainability. Thank you very much. I'm going to uh, go back to all panelists again uh, with some specific uh, questions. And this time uh, we are going to start with uh, our first uh, panelist, uh, Lina, again, uh, who uh, represent the government uh, and the government policies. Um, the new national tourism policy of Colombia is extremely in uh, the way uh, it uh, process in the integration of circular economy uh, principles in tourism sector. So uh, Lina, could you share with us some insights on the national tourism policy and how it process to address uh, plastic pollution? Uh, at sustainable management and food that you have mentioned, please. Thank you, Professor. Um, yeah, on my previous intervention, I shared about uh, the, um, the related actions that we are taking uh, with the sustainable tourism policy together with nature. And as I mentioned before, uh, this plan 
consisted on six strategies that are consistent with the global agenda for sustainable development. Also, um, we are planning this ambitious action plan to reduce plastic pollution and promote the circular economy for plastic products in the tourism sector. This year, we, we plan to have a campaign to support destinations with the help of local authorities and local governments and environmental authorities in order to implement these strategies to reduce plastic pollution with a plan on the plastic elimination uh, pilot. We want to create a pilot on beaches. Um, so also um, with the, the previous and uh, actions and previous um, resources that I related on my previous intervention, the e-learning platform, the manual, the manual of good practices, the help of some entrepreneurs, and the sustainable gastronomy guide and the Colombia Olympia campaign, which is creating awareness on the on the um, on the importance of keeping tourist destinations clean, and all these related um, main actions and main activities and strategies um, are are related to promote greater efficiency and articulation in the relationship with supply and demand on, on touristic activity. So the important thing here and through the future and through what we are thinking is that communities need to know the benefits of tourism in business productivity, but also the territorial equ uh, equity and the quality of life to host communities through uh, specific actions. So we need to do these alliances with the public and the private sector. And we need to, uh, we think that sustainable and tourism remains a challenge, but that this is, must be our goal, our right now goal. So I think that through the last years that we have uh, created a chart, a path uh, that really creates a sustainable plan for our next generation, right? So we think that we are looking forward for a stronger, a well-prepared and a more resilient tourism economy. So this was our goal within the last years and this must be our goal within the next years. Thank you very much. And I, uh, if I'm right, I hear the, uh, from the news that, that your government is, uh, or the Minister of Tourism of Colombia has become uh, the first uh, signatory of the Global Tourism Plastic Initiative that we have to congratulate you uh, for this uh, uh, action and uh, being pioneer in this case. Thank you, Lina. If you, I, uh, uh, let me uh, uh, move. I would like to ask uh, Delphin my uh, second question. Um, I want to uh, have uh, a few examples of how uh, your members are implementing your nature-based solutions and how tourists are engaging more uh, in these uh, experiences. Um, Delphine? Thanks. I, I think that's what I answered first. Um, so, you know, adopting that four C's um, framework uh, and working on uh, conservation, community engagement, uh, cultural stewardship and uh, ensuring that tourism, it, you know, provides a diversified livelihood. Maybe perhaps an additional thing that, you know, contributes to implementing that or helping implementing or the sustainability of that, of the nature-based solution would be to accelerate change. How do we engage more people in investing in nature-based solutions uh, and taking, best, taking up best practice for tourism to deliver its promise as a vehicle for sustainable development? And I, th I, and I, you know, what I want to introduce is that to do this, we work with members upstream from the core of our membership, which are basically privately protected areas, tourism-based pri privately protected areas. So we work upstream to help green the supply chain. That's one of our emphasis. So we've opened our membership to travel designers, travel agents, and support them in realizing and optimizing their role um, uh, in the four Cs and, and being that bridge be between influencing guests in guest choices and supporting uh, their their suppliers accommodation, for example, to adopt best practices. The second part is really drawing on the experience that we have developed in the last 
12 years with our membership and bring this knowledge out to other, you know, to other business in the sector. So we've created free resources, you know, picking up from Lena's, um, what they've been doing also, you know, self-based resources on planning for sustainability, embedding sustainability in, a, in, a, in the business around the four Cs, as well as very practical courses on resource efficiency. Um, the other part of what we're doing is working downstream and supporting our members to, to empower their team or, you know, to find and empower sustainability champions in their team to be themselves agents of change in their communities so that we can accelerate the movement so that, you know, there's more and more people who take responsibility to, to, um, uh, to protect nature and engage people. So the communities that our members have to engage is the guests, their teams, uh, their peers, and, and their neighboring communities. And I think what's important to understand is native-based solutions are only long-term solutions if we all collaborate. So again, picking up on what Lena has just said, this is collaboration between private sector, conservation sector, tourism sector, um, and remembering that tourism in, in you know, for SDG 14 and, and, and 15, which I'm talking particularly about here, uh, is, is not the whole of it. We need to diversify uh, and we need to, to keep an eye on, on the resilience of the financial means to support the conservation. Thank you, Jeffrey. Um, uh, yes, uh, uh, collaboration. I can summarize uh, uh, the uh, message uh, that you uh, are delivering is collaboration, and it's very important. It's not easy to create collaboration. It's um, the story of social capital and raising social capital that takes time. And the fact that you involve people and you create the guest host uh, uh, relationship and collaboration in positive uh, fact is a high or big capacity that need to be uh, explored and shared uh, uh, with uh, the rest of uh, the um, tourism industry family uh, to be more sustainable. Uh, if I move on to uh, uh, our next uh, panelist, Nadine, again, uh, from Travel uh, Corporation. Um, uh, we knew that specifically uh, SDG number 13 on climate action is addressed by the Glasgow Declaration on Climate Action in Tourism. And the Travel Corporation is a signatory of the declaration. Um, so Nadine, could you uh, share with us uh, some insight on how the Travel Corporation started uh, its journey in climate action, how you uh, develop your climate action plan, uh, which are the main uh, elements uh, included in the plan and what challenges, barriers do you encounter when implementing the plan? Sure. So the, the Glasgow Declaration was a huge uh, opportunity and a step for us to participate in. It does commit all signatories to net zero and to half emissions by 2030, um, as well as uh, achieve net zero by 2050. So when we decided to sign the, the, the Glasgow Declaration, we really had to think about, well, what does that mean for our company? How do we become net zero? What does that look like? Um, and that's really when we we signed the signatory and we, and we just dived into the work. It was really what's going to help us get there. And that was the science-based targets because we know we need to focus on reductions as much as possible. Um, so our company really took that opportunity to look into what would those reduction targets look like for our business. We are an asset heavy travel business. So we own our hotels, we own some ships, uh, we own those vehicles. So we really have to put in place a decarbonization plan first and foremost to help us to reach those opportunities. Um, the, Desco, the, Decla, the Glasgow Declaration has an amazing network um, of community members across the travel industry that are facing the same challenges as we are. They're facing the same challenges when it comes to measuring their trips, measuring their, the scope of their business. Um, so we're able to collaborate in that environment to you know, share best practices, understand what each other are doing, and more importantly, share those tools that we're using um, to be able to measure our um, emissions. The other thing that we're doing is the Glasgow Declaration also includes destinations. Um, so as a tour operator of our size, we're able to go to the Glasgow Declaration, look at some of those destinations and understand, can we share some of our data on the carbon, on our trip footprints with those destinations um, to be able to understand where there are opportunities for those destinations also to reduce their uh, carbon footprint. 
So it's things like that, the collaboration across the industry um, that has really gotten us far with the Glasgow Declaration and I'm proud to be a signatory um, to that as well. I just want to touch briefly on some of those challenges that you mentioned. So I did note um, earlier in my presentation that um, communication and understanding of climate is still uh, not quite there with our travelers and, and not necessarily there with the average person. So we are doing a lot of work to really understand how do we make it as simple as possible? How do we help travelers um, understand what their carbon footprint means um, and take responsibility for it? So that's a large portion of our work going forward as well. Thank you, Nadine. Yes, exactly how carbon footprints should be uh, detected, uh, analyzed, uh, indicated, and who is uh, going to take responsibility. For sure, this uh, carbon emission has a uh, cost, and this cost-benefit analysis should be carefully analyzed, and uh, how to make conservation uh, a job, and how to benefit from conservation in short and long term. Uh, is the beauty of your experience that we uh, need or can learn from. Um, if I move to our next presenter, uh, Mr. Uh, Chris Kuka from the South Pacific Tourism that uh, their long uh, run uh, views and strategies are unique. Um, I would uh, like to ask uh, with uh, uh, this uh, perspective that with member countries that are uh, island states and our different uh, stages of uh, development in different islands and progress in terms of sustainability. We have the issue of COVID-19 crisis that is still uh, uh, exists to the present. So I would like to ask you, uh, Chris, how does uh, SPTO and uh, its members implemented this uh, long-term strategies and strategic plans? Can you share with us uh, the main uh, challenges you faced and some examples of the initiatives that you bring to live the um, strategy, please? Um, thank you, uh, Kazim. Um, although the member countries are in different stages of development in this case, but uh, um, we all are are under a Pacific Sustainable Tourism Policy Framework that will guide uh, the countries. And we have countries that are, are sort of more advanced, probably about five or six of our member countries have developed their own sustainable policies, uh, but the rest of them are still currently developing. So we needed to develop a overall umbrella uh, as a compass and a navigating policy framework to help our member countries develop their own respective ones. And these, um, these uh, and our sustainable policy framework has four goals that it will guide them to help develop their, their sustainable tourism. Uh, I think it's also important to, to highlight to the audience that sustainable tourism is, is still an embryonic um, stage in the Pacific. Uh, for example, with SPTO, we only established our division in 2018 uh, in this case, and um, it is a new area that we, have, we, are, uh, we are exploring and also further developing as a focus for the Pacific in this case, looking at more of uh, high value, low, low impact tourists in, in the Pacific Islands, uh, which will fit us more, particularly in niche tourism in this case. But looking forward, um, in moving forward in this case for of all our Pacific Islands, uh, by 2030, we would like to see all our Pacific Islands more empowered by and benefiting from tourism uh, that is more resilient, prosperous and inclusive. And I think um, this reflects uh, definitely our Pacific core values uh, as well as belief system. Um, and, and definitely it will improve uh, the well-being of our communities and protect and restore and promote our cultures, islands and ocean ecosystems. And in a nutshell, these are our Pacific greatest assets. Um, the ministries of tourism or national tourism organizations can contribute to achieve um, the SDG, SDGs um, by also aligning our national tourism policies to the SDGs and measuring and reporting on tourism's contribution to the SDGs as well and leading and championing uh, sustainable development in the tourism sector 
through more effective and genuine stakeholder engagement. And lastly, I think with SPTO and the Ministries of Tourism, we can also align our policies and sector plans um, to the 2050 Blue Pacific Strategy, uh, which will probably be endorsed by our, our leaders tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, yes, uh, exactly. Uh, you mentioned about the leadership, and that's, I think, uh, one of the main uh, lessons that uh, we should learn from the uh, South Pacific organization. Um, let me ask Aoki-san um, uh, to share us uh, some of uh, his experiences uh, um, in community-based tourism development in the North region in Dominican Republic. Uh, and I would like uh, to know from Aoki-san uh, to uh, uh, share uh, more about the projects, uh, the main type of actions uh, that were implemented uh, and how tourism project could actually uh, advance uh, several sustainable development uh, targets uh, in the field and with the community level. Uh, Oksan, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the question, uh, Kadun san And then in terms of the project, the contents, we focusing on the uh, not and the community business uh, promotion and then the focusing on the uh, the group who are working actually produce the uh, experience and the product. Also, the uh, the uh, region. Or the, or the municipal, the provincial level, create the, um, the group which we can they can focus on that not only for the uh, product, also the, the development of the community, and also the promotion, which is the positioning the uh, community tourism, uh, community, sustainable community tourism itself within the develop and the agenda of the development of the uh, tourism in the Dominican Republic. Also, that, as I said, that includes uh, uh, human resources, that's the key. So that's the info technique in the institution who can support this area. So, and, and then the governance, and then that is uh, important for the, uh, not, for, not only for the community level, but also the, the, uh, this uh, community initiative can be supported by the government. And then, you know, the, uh, the almost the end of the uh, project, the uh, COVID, the pandemic, it's, it's, it's happened. But we have established the uh, relationship, the communication uh, between the community level, regional level, and the central level. And then that is uh, uh, immediately we can uh, respond to that the, uh, pandemic. And then through the uh, local coordinator, and then they, we can connect it directly with the community. And the community always is uh, the weakest uh, um, than the, uh, the person, the re weakest actor for those uh, kind of disaster. So we fully support the uh, community, but also we make the some kind of the, um, um, the uh, manual for how to deal with the situation to prepare for receiving the, uh, uh, the tourists. Uh, immediately. So as, as after a year, the pandemic, they can receive the uh, holy same as before the, the number of the tourists. And they actually, some of them are get more uh, visitor than the before. So they could use opportunity for those, uh, those opportunities. So the, in terms of the, uh, how to contribute the, those uh, practice in the, in, the, um, the, uh, in the SDG, the empowerment of the community is a key. So it's not only for the, um, the, uh, the uh, community in terms of tourism, but also those uh, uh, share the vision, share the trust within the community through the activity of the tourism can be achieved. So that is, uh, I think that it's a good contribution by the project. Thank you so much, Augustan. Um, um, it's uh, really uh, interesting, wonderful, and a uh, handful uh, panel that uh, uh, can't be summarized in one minute. I have to uh, close this in one minute with a message that uh, you guys are delivering to the community. And I would uh, like to summarize it as uh, the Columbia uh, case of the industry uh, in responsibility uh, with uh, the um, uh, case of uh, um, uh, the long run uh, for the collaboration lesson. Uh, Nadine uh, brought us to uh, traceability and uh, to a measurement uh, in the field 
uh, with pollution and carbon. Uh, in the South Pacific case, we learned uh, leadership and a strong vision. And uh, from Aukisan, we learned inclusion. So uh, acting responsible, uh, collaborate, uh, being uh, clear and uh, uh, to trace and evaluate with a strong uh, leadership uh, and with uh, uh, help of community, uh, we can create uh, a sustainable uh, development uh, <clears throat> system that everybody benefit. Um, today's panel uh, is uh, concluded by the strong message of sustainability and development. And I would like to thank all of you uh, who followed us uh, through the end of the panel. Uh, thank you so much. Back to you, Claudia, uh, for the final remark. Um, thank you very much, Kasim. Uh, so we used to have a Q&A um, session, but uh, we are out of time. However, please note that we, apart from the discussions that are already taking place in the chat, so we are responding to the questions. We are taking note and we will revert to you uh, and uh, transmit also the questions to the speakers as deem appropriate. Anyways, what we wanted to say, it's a big thank you to all the speakers and the presenters for uh, your uh, participation. Thanks to everyone who uh, was with us in Zoom and YouTube. And uh, we invite you to visit the Tourism for SDGs platform. The link has been shared with you um, in the chat, where you can find the, in the landing page of the event, the link to the YouTube recording of the side event, as well as a beautiful video of uh, the South Pacific Tourism Organization showcasing the work being done by the organization and its members. We are here for you, uh, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, advancing the sustainable tourism development and helping sustainability through tourism. Thank you very much. Have a great evening, uh, afternoon, and see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you all. Greetings from Colombia. Bye. Hello, oh, thank you everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone.